Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series on homeopathy with our beloved Dr. Pachagavka. Today we decided on talking about the renal system. Yes. Wonderful. In humans, especially, renal system is a vital organ, actually. It's a very important system. And like blood is purified in lungs, so long as carbon dioxide and oxygen transport is there. Same way, kidney does the filtering of blood. We can say a purification of blood rather. So, toxins are eliminated through this excretory system, through, along with urine. Some chemicals or even, even some metabolic products which are unwanted in body, they also are eliminated through urine. And it's a very complex system. We have two kidneys of almost this fist size on both the sides. And almost 20% of volume of blood is supplied to kidneys with every stroke of heart. Almost 20%. And this blood is circulated through kidneys and, and the kidneys work as a wonderful complex filter. The renal artery branches in, in various parts of the kidneys. And then finally the smallest particle of this network, arterial network, is arteriole, which supplies blood to glomeruli. Glomeruli is a small tubular organism, organ in kidney, and millions of such tubules are there in kidney. We call it nephron. So, from prox proximal tubule to this nephron and then to terminal part, distal part, the blood is allowed to flow through it and through osmosis, the essential ingredients are absorbed, reabsorbed in our body and what is not necessary is allowed to pass further. Then it can have you know, so many minerals which are excess. And, and the minerals which are required are reabsorbed. For example, calcium. So, the parathyroid releases a hormone which regularizes this calcium reabsorption. Same way, sodium. Same way, potassium. So, these um, contents are absorbed and, and even the food ingredients circulated through this that re reabsorbed in our system. And what is not wanted is allowed to pass further. So naturally, the, the hydration, if you are well hydrated, so essential amount of water is taken up by the body again, and which is excess is allowed to pass further. And each tubule then collects this urine, and then that urine is collected in the bladder through ureters. So this way, Every minute, every minute, almost uh, 120 to 150 ml of blood is circulated through it or purified or filtered, we can call it. So, in about 24 hours, on an average, each person's kidney, this renal system, filters around 200 liters of fluid. Imagine, like our blood volume on average adult is 5 liters. So, in one day, 200 liters of filtration is done of fluid. That means, imagine how many times each drop of blood is filtered through these kidneys and therefore, the balance is maintained. So, if anything is excess, then it is eliminated, excreted through this system. If it is needed more, then the prompt absorption is there. And along with this filtration, there are two, three functions kidney is involved into, vital functions. The blood pressure regulation is done by kidneys. Not only that, even for 
inducing red blood corpuscle development in our bone marrow that also is stimulated through kidneys and then the the what we call osmoregulation the the hydration in the body also is maintained by kidneys so it's a very intelligent system where the whole body's fluid balance is maintained that that proportion where like how much hydration our body has to maintain that is governed by kidneys and this osmoregulation is a very important factor like suppose you have consumed excess fluid and then extra fluid is eliminated through urine so that the the blood composition is maintained suppose one is dehydrated so naturally there would be less amount of um, water being wasted in urine so more concentrated urine you will get so this has a wonderful system where intelligently the decision making also is done and the vasoconstriction wherever required vasodilatation wherever is required then viscosity of the blood also is maintained because of the regulation in kidneys so even blood pressure regulation is done by the chemical secreted by our kidneys and and it's a well equipped organ now as the blood is you know filtered essential ingredients are absorbed then that is transported through renal vein and again taken back to the main stream circulation and that means it goes to the heart then it gets oxygenated of course and then again it is circulated so each drop of blood is several times filtered in kidneys and therefore what in dialysis what we do we do it artificially and imagine whole life some suppose some person's kidneys are not functioning well person cannot survive more and the worst part of uh, kidney uh, related disorders especially the failure is it goes just symptomless and once becomes irreversible then only it is actually becoming apparent so many times renal failures are most dangerous because they are just asymptomatic and by the time the symptoms prevail are noticed yeah that time means it's too late and it is almost irreversible many times mm. unless there are extrinsic factor where the kidney failure take place but when there is a death of nephrons these are uh, tubule renal tubules and then the renal failure occurs it is almost irreversible and therefore they advise either external dialysis means that filtration you have to go on doing for the whole life or then have a kidney transplant a new kidney is installed from the donor so it's a vital organ very complex but at the same time very efficiently working we have seen i i remember one case a child swallowed uh, uh, the the pencil had a colored uh, lead in it and the child had swallowed and next day the child was getting like almost dark blue color urine they never did not realize but then on after chemical analysis they realized that the child had must have consumed and they verified it the child had that pencil lead which was removed and that was taken so all those color pigments were excreted through urine ah so so most of the toxins also are excreted and imagine millions of tubules and from those tubules the blood is allowed to pass and then what is essential is absorbed by the body that to maintaining balance whatever is excess is allowed to pass further along with the urine and this urine is collected in in bladder and once the bladder is almost full then it is excreted or through urination that is through urethra so such an intelligent system the body has which regulates your sodium potassium calcium 
then regulates your blood pressure, regulates your uh, water hydration in the body. And along with that, there is no toxin. Even, even there are many drugs, antibiotics or some drugs which, which are excreted through renal system. The excess or even the debris or the byproduct of sometimes our um, own tissues consume our own tissues and there is death and that urea formed out of it because when proteins are lysed they are they are um, uh, what we call analyzed and utilized then the debris or the byproducts which are undue in the body are excreted through urine and urea is one of them now my father had kidney stones and they put him in a water bath to shatter them. Is it a good thing or not? See, kidney stone is formed because there occurs some nucleus and if the, the urine which is being formed is rich in minerals which, which are being excreted, then there occurs turbidity or, or what we call mineralization occurs along with that nucleus. Nucleus can be dead bacterium or dead tissue cast or whatever. Because this urine contains some RBCs and pus cells and um, dead bacteria and all. So if that works as a nucleus, where there is stagnation, because kidneys do not have a force like heart, you know, pumping like. It is only the osmoregulation and that sort of a passive, you know, force which works in kidneys. And when, when the urine is rich in minerals, especially in parathyroid disorder, the calcium is excreted so much. It is not reabsorbed, but it is excreted through urine. And that time, these minerals start getting deposited, sedimented along on some nucleus. And then the kidney stones are formed. So even if some person is sitting in the water tub, the stones are not going to get dissolved. More than that, almost majority of the kidneys in our sonography, we have seen that they contain turbidity. There is collection of minerals. Only if it is the larger than 2 mm size, we label it as kidney stone. But this turbidity below the size of 2 mm, we don't label it as kidney stone at all. But Almost each kidney has such debris or, or sediments there. So definitely, but if person is sitting in tub and all, maybe the, the um, hydration or the, the balance or, or the kidneys are stimulated to go in hyperfunction. Bladder also is stimulated to excrete urine freely. And maybe passing of this stone will be easier. Like what we do is, we advise person can consume about 15 liters of fluid in a day and filter because kidneys has, have a tremendous capacity. So in the when we detect a renal calculus in any stage, it can be in the kidney proper or it can be in the pelvis or it can be in ureter or bladder or even urethra. What we do is, we ask the person to drink ample of fluid on empty stomach. On empty stomach, the emptying for water is very quick. Water gets disseminated in the bloodstream um, and, and immediately the urine formation is enhanced. So if you drink water on empty stomach, within 10 minutes, the, the urine formation will be quick and, and it will come out. So there would be almost like flushing of kidneys if you drink water on empty stomach. So what we do is, each time, suppose person is eating food three times a day. So each time we ask the person to drink water like lot of 400 ml, 400 ml, 400 ml every uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And in about one hour, two liters of fluid is given. So definitely in one hour again, the urine output will be almost equal because on empty stomach, very quick it will be. So person will have at least one bladder full is having 400 to 500 ml capacity. So at least three times your person will pass urine within one, one and a half hour. 
and it will be almost like flushing of kidneys and then stone either it will be desedimented because of uh, flushing or it will be body will just pass it on deliver it but if it's more than 2 mm up to 6 mm we have seen ah. up to 6 mm it comes below 2 mm so we don't label it as stone mm -hmm. only yes yeah when we say the kidney has stone means it is about 2 mm and it is not always like oval or or um, square or something it is some many times you know longitudinal like one ah. dimension if it is smaller than 5 mm kidney stone can easily pass through the pelvis the ureter and then come to mm. bladder and through urethra also up to 5 6 mm of uh, dimension at least one dimension should be that if it is uh, like length is more and the breadth is uh, small definitely it can negotiate through it mm. and it can come down and we have seen almost like delivery the pain comes in in ureter and all we have seen it comes to bladder then it eases and once it is in bladder again further flushing then it can get lodged in urethra but according to symptoms we can make out that it is a keen, where is the location of uh, um, renal calculus there are occasions where the renal calculi are spiky in nature depends upon the composition hmm. like if it is a complex stone form of oxalates and uh, ureates and phosphates sometimes their composition is spiky spikes are there mm -hmm. and those spiky stones when they are descending through ureter and all with abrasion they can pierce and cause bleeding it's very painful at the same time even it gives blood bleeding and that also we can make out like typically if the whole bladder is emitting uh, red urine full of blood containing blood that means the spiky stone is above the level of bladder that is in ureter or pelvis somewhere sometimes if the spiky stone is in bladder in bladder what happens when the person is passing stone at the terminal you know part of urination the stone gets lodged in urethra and then it causes pain and and even bleeding so that means if the pain is at the end of the urination that means the stone is in bladder which is coming ah. at the mouth mm -hmm. and if it is small enough to negotiate through urethra it will definitely be passed through urethra and if it is not small enough then it will cause pain and then it will remain in the bladder only how do you treat it see if it is smaller size we just go on I giving understand. flushing and right. then it is delivered through if, if normal passage if urethra it's, if it's bigger if it is bigger then if it is smooth and if it is bigger it can remain in bladder and go on getting desedimented by by oh. flushing for in few months become smaller oh. or sometimes depending upon composition if it is brittle it may break open in pieces and then come out but nowadays they pass cystoscope and break it open they they pass cystoscope through urethra to the bladder and they they cut it in size through mm. urethroscope by vibration and then once it is in pieces because it is brittle then it comes out easily not only that nowadays what they do is there is a technology called as a lithotripsy where they insert a stent in the ureter and then they they put vibrate vibrations to the stone so that it becomes brittle ah. breaks open and in pieces come out this way in lithotripsy also there are various techniques that you pass cystoscope up to that approach in pelvis and then do it mechanically by approximation or through laser also they can just break open the ah. calculus but in that what happens the kidney tissues also get damaged through laser by approaching it or so the other two processes are better yes one more is the directly they pass needle to the it is like ct guided thing they guide and that needle is passed and physically mechanically it touches it and mm. then vibrates and breaks it open in pieces so lithotripsy there or earlier so they used to just open method and remove the stone 
I have seen a case where an aged person had this bladder stone and it was smooth and huge size, almost inch size. Oh. So there was no possibility of it negotiating through urethra. They said it has to be operated. The moment they used to take in operation theatre, his blood pressure used to shoot up. And they used to say, no, Anastasia person would say, no, we can't operate it now. Anastasia is not possible. So they would allow. So in this process, three times it happened in 15 days. Then they told anyway, it is not painful and the person doesn't have vacation now. His vacation was over. So he said, okay, we'll do it in next vacation after six months. And after then, we started giving homeopathic medicines, which will help in desedimentation and this drinking water pattern. And after six months, they said, now it is time, we can go for surgery. It is again, person has vacation, can afford to go to hospital. And they x-rayed and the stone was not there. So it's quite possible, conservatively, yeah. we can treat it. Especially the tendency, we can treat it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. Namaste. Namaste all. We'll see you again next week.